In bed seven, we've got uh, Mr. Richard Rudd, 43-year-old gentleman, a motorcyclist uh, who hit a car with quite high speed, uh, found 60 meters away from his uh, motorbike. He was paraplegic at scene, but we realized that he's A, not waking up properly, and B, not moving his uh, arms anymore. So there's some discussion going on with the family at the moment uh, whether we should uh, withdraw treatment. Richard Rudd has been in a specialized brain unit called neurointensive care for 31 days. A motorcycle accident severely damaged his spine and left him totally paralyzed. He's showing no signs of life. The ventilator which breathes for him is the only thing keeping him alive. His mom, dad and two daughters all agree it's time to let Richard go. I'm proud of you. 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 I'm proud of who died from a uh, cervical cord injury. Bloody hell. Uh oh, at the same accident? No, 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 this is years ago. Seems a bit unfair, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Professor David Menon is a world expert in neurointensive care. Today, he's in charge of the unit and will oversee the withdrawal of Richard's life support. The question is, how reversible is the spinal cord injury? That's an important question because that's... I think we can be very confident the legs are not going to recover. Going to recover. Pretty confident the arms won't. We can't be 100%. So the relatives were saying to me, very clear, he would not wish to survive and we would not wish him to survive with disability of this degree. Before withdrawing treatment, Professor Menon must examine Richard. Richard, can you stick your tongue out for me? Okay, I'm just going to open your eyes wide with my own hands. Not uncomfortable, just opening them. Richard, can you look to the side for me? And over to this side now. Good man, okay. John. Can you just get John Coles? Yeah. Sorry? Can you get Dr. Coles, please? And again to your right. Over to this side now. Okay. Richard, my name is Professor Menon. I'm one of the consultants in the neuro ICU. You, you were involved in a road traffic accident and you've had an injury to your spine. You're on a ventilator. Now, I know you can understand me. I'm just going to have a chat with Dr. Coles, who's been taking care of you at the weekend. And I'm just going to make sure that you can understand me, so just open your eyes again. Look to your right. I'm just going to have a look at your scans, Richard, and come back. It doesn't make sense, because there's... there's, there's no, no other. Richard's eye movements are totally unexpected and the first sign he could be conscious. It changes everything and means Richard could make the decision to live or die. Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge has the largest neurocritical care unit in Europe with 21 beds. It was set up 13 years ago by Professor Menon and has become world-renowned for the treatment of brain injuries. In this unit, the rules governing death are directly challenged. It's really important to think about death not as an event but as a process. 
that process can be strung out quite considerably and slowed down. It can also be interrupted. 40% of seriously brain-injured patients here go on to make a meaningful recovery. But stopping death in its tracks is a race against... This morning, Professor Menon discovered Richard could move his eyes to simple commands. It isn't entirely certain that this young man's lost capacity. If he has very complex capacity to make decisions, then it would be very bad not to involve him in decision-making, and essentially, which is absolutely a life-or-death situation. So what should we do with him, then? He gathers colleagues to help him assess Richard's level of understanding. I don't know why he should have it, no. but clearly he's... I don't think he's neurologically as compromised as we think. Yeah, it, it's an unusual set of circumstances. But, but, but if he can, if he can obey commands and respond, then we ought to have that conversation with him. With the patient? Yeah. Yes, that would be difficult. But you're convi he's, he's absolutely going to command his eyes now. Well, I, I think, yeah, I think we should... We should go and have a look at him together. Okay. Richard, can you look to your right for me? Look over to this side. Okay, look to your left now. Look to your left again. Okay. Richard, I need to be able to talk to you to find out what you want us to do. So I just need to know whether you can understand. What I'm going to suggest is that we go through a few things for me to know whether... By moving your eyes, you can, you can communicate with me. Yes on this side, no on this side. Is your name Richard? Do you live in London? Okay. <clears throat> For doctors to ask Richard if he'd like to continue the treatment which keeps him alive they must be sure he has the full mental capacity required to make such a major decision. When I say now, I want you to first look to the left and then to the right. Not as yet, but when I tell you. Now. So he's able to follow single commands like look to the left or look to the right. What I've not been able to get is uh, a feel that he's able to get information, keep it in his memory, and then act on it even five or ten seconds later, which obviously means it's going to be quite difficult to be certain of what his wishes were. So I think we'll just have to talk to the family and see what happens next.